Today we're going to craft with Dollar Tree pumpkins and much, much more. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be a fall broom decor piece. You could almost call this a swag if you wanted. We're going to start with some Dollar Tree leather tags. I have some thrifted flowers, so I have this beautiful cream colored hydrangea and some more of these other pretty rust colored flowers. And then I have this pick that I thrifted, but you can definitely use a couple of picks from Dollar Tree. This one is really, really thick, very pretty. And then this is a thrifted broom that I got from Goodwill. All right, so this is 36 inches. We are going to cut this pick down into smaller pieces. So this will kind of give you an idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get about eight little pieces out of here. You would probably need two or three of the Dollar Tree picks to do this. And you can use whatever you like. If you want to use leaves, you can use leaves. You can use grasses or whatever you like. I'm going to cut apart the flower picks. You want to leave a little bit of branch on there or stem on there because we're going to be using it to attach it to the wreath. We're going to start with this grass piece right into the center top of the wreath. Then I'm going to put one on each side. The broom itself is kind of thin and small and that's okay. We're going to beef it up with all this beautiful colored grass. You can even go on the inside and push it up into there. Now because the broom is so tightly packed underneath where you can see the little braid in the top right corner, these pieces will stick in here just fine if you're going to use this in the house. So you don't have to glue it down unless you're making it to sell it. And just continue along till you get that as thick and full as you like. And I love this and I love that it extends beyond the, the wooded part of the broom or the little stems of the broom. I love it. And now we're going to move to the upper part of the same little sweeping part of the broom. I'm going to go right above the little, the braid or the, um, you see the line where the thread is. I'm going to go right above it with one of those picks and kind of push it to the side. Now it's on wire, so it makes it easy for you to give a little bend to your pieces. Same thing with the Dollar Tree picks. They're on wire, so you can bend them. And if anything pops off, generally you can just pop it right back on there. So no worries about that. Now I'm going to put this other one on the left a little bit lower down than the one on the right just to give a little bit of interest. I'm going to take the stem of this hydrangea and make a hook. Then I'm going to lay it down on the broom and push it upward. So you can see here how we did that. I have pushed it upward. Now I'm going to take the leaves and push them up on these flowers so that they can be seen. I'm just adjusting my petals a little bit. If you get a piece from the thrift store and it's kind of wild looking, you can always use a little hot glue to arrange your petals and to make it look um, tighter instead of, you know, opened up so much. Whatever you like. But I love these just the way they are. And I'm just going to put it on the bottom side and press it upward just like I did the other one. We're going to do that with all of the flowers. You're going to give it a little crook behind the back part and then just arrange your leaves once you get them pushed up. This is not symmetrical and there's no certain pattern to this. I love these colors. I knew I had to use the broom when I saw these beautiful colored flowers. They're so nice. And then the little bud, I'll put it right to the side. Sometimes you have to move it around a little bit um, to make sure that you get it in a tight part of the broom. You don't want anything falling out. So now I'm gonna add just a little tag here and I got out of camera range, I apologize. Y'all know my process. But I'm just adding hot glue and I'm just gonna put it down on the base of the broom and then push the little string part, the leather string part just up on the inside where you can't see it. You can cut it off if you want or use it for another project. And this is how this little beauty looks. Love this. This will not be taken apart. This is going to be put right in my house. Perfect piece of fall decor, I think. Here is this one hanging up. 
You can put this on your door, you can put it on a wall, whatever you like. Beautiful. If you want to put it outside your door, just use a little bit of Gorilla Hot Glue to make sure that all your pieces stay in place. And you can do that just by putting it on the end of each pick before you put it into the broom. Do you like this one? I hope y'all have seen my other broom swag projects. Love them. And I will be doing more for more holidays. The sweater pumpkin wreath is going to be the next one. Taking this familiar Dollar Tree wreath form. This is a pumpkin. I have done many projects with this. I'm going to take a infinity scarf, which I got from a thrift store. Never used it because it's hot in Alabama. I'm going to use the other tag and a variety of ribbons. We're going to add some blue today, guys. Look at these white sunflowers. Gorgeous. Choose some greenery that you like. Anything that's going to coordinate with your ribbons is kind of what I go by. Some orange hydrangea. Some Look at these, I love these pigs. Witch hazel bush, this is the first time I've ever seen them. And then other little pieces like sedums or whatever. We're gonna take some heirloom white and I'm going to spray paint this frame. While it's drying, I'm going to thread my needle with a little bit of this cotton thread and an upholstery needle. Just like you would a regular needle. Okay, once the frame is dry, you don't have to paint the back. We're gonna start laying this on the top. Now the reason we paint it is because I don't want black showing through my white scarf. If anything shows, I want it to be the same color so it kind of blends in together. Now I am going to just start by laying this down. I'm not gonna cut anything on this project. So, you know, if you feel comfortable cutting this and thinking that it won't unravel, then that is totally fine. Um, you can do whatever you would like. You know, you can also use an old sweater to do this if you find something at thrift store or something that you're not using anymore. Maybe you got a coffee stain somewhere on the sweater. You could cut it up and use the chest piece to go over your wreath. So I'm just gonna start tacking it down. I don't wanna pull anything tight because I don't want the ribs underneath to uh, be very pronounced. So the ribs, what I mean is the wired pieces underneath the pumpkin. I don't want that to be pronounced. I want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to pull around and use my little clamps. This is the easiest way for me to do it. It holds everything in place. It kind of gives you an extra hand. And that is very important when you have small hands. Or maybe you have arthritis in your hands. This makes it easier too. We take our help where we can get it. And these are just little clamps that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to continue all the way around. I like to go on my flatter surfaces first and then work on the curves. And this is how it is going to look. And now all my little lines are together. I'm gonna to take my threaded needle and just go through underneath where the stem is. And I am going to tie that in a triple knot. You can do a double knot, you can do a triple knot. The reason I'm tying it to the frame is because if you tried to put the loop through that very loose weave of the fabric of the pumpkin, it would just come right out. So if you tie it to the frame, it's gonna stay exactly where it needs to be. You can trim off what's left to keep it nice and neat. And then I'm just gonna go to the inside. You can see what I'm doing here. It's easier to just watch and just go over, move your thread out of the way. If you try to keep your head, your, if you're right-handed and you're using the needle in the right hand, try to keep that thread under and around your left hand. And that'll keep it from getting tangled up um, around the other clips and things that are on your pumpkin. It took me a few little tries to get this right, but once I started doing it, I had my process down and it went pretty quickly. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just trying to keep it under my hand. And I'm just gonna go back and forth. I'm doing about maybe like a half inch, moving over a half inch. And then when you get to the end, you can just make a couple of loops and knot it off trim it down and then if you've got further to go go ahead and do that entire process again looks nice doesn't it you can barely see it so you want to use whatever type of cord is going to match follow me on my social media and then once it is all done this is how it's going to look 
nice nice and smooth nothing is stretched too tight then I'm going to just on the inside like I said I didn't cut it so I'm just gonna put some glue on there you're gonna please use a cool temperature so that it doesn't melt your fingers burn your fingertips off and then just pinch it together and hold it together and then once that's down you can add some hot glue or cool temp glue whichever underneath and then hold it down flip it over and then you can just kind of cup your hand on the top and press your hand underneath onto your hand above and this is going to help hold it if you see on the right that's how it looks when it is complete and you won't see this part because you're not going to put this on a glass door it's not that type of a wreath it's going to go on a wall or something with a back on it so I'm just going to go around and, and continue to press down and add a little bit of glue any place it looks like it needs to be um, you know stuck down and in place just to give it a nice profile once we flip it over now time to work on the floral part I'm going to use a scrap of cardboard and a scrap of floral foam or foam whatever you have I'm going to add some glue here and I've just got it propped up on a box so you can see it and I'm going to press these two together it's going to kind of melt them together around the, the um, stem of the pumpkin so here's my beautiful white sunflower that I've chosen to use mine were thrifted but you can definitely get these at Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna put these leaves right on the back of the flower. That was easy enough, right? Sorry, out of angle again, out of camera angle, but you can see this is how it will look. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of these floral picks. They are, um, a little sparse they did come from Dollar Tree to make them a little bit bulkier a little thicker I am going to just add two leaves from one branch to a branch that already has two leaves on it now we have four leaves on our branch you see how it's got a little curve in it and that's so it will face forward instead of outward yeah I don't want it to face the sides I want it to be kind of facing forward for this project so here's another little branch beautiful it's got the little berries on it same thing give it just a little bend and then we're going to place it opposite on the bottom now I cut this flower stem I should have cut it longer than that but you'll see I'll fix that later no worries about that I'll fix it later okay so I'm gonna take these little hydrangeas I think these came from the Dollar Tree but I've had them for a little while so I can't recall for sure but there's only a couple of little pieces on each stem so to make those thicker, I'm going to put them in sets of three. I'm gonna use my floral wire to just hold those together. You can use floral tape if you want. And then I'm going to put the entire set of three all in one place. Because hydrangeas are full, right? And I don't know why I am so loving hydrangeas this fall. I have done several projects already with fall colored hydrangeas and I'm, I'm loving them loving them loving them all right so now we're going to go up so we have the bottom right and the top left with the hydrangeas and then i'm going to start adding the little witch hazel pieces these add so much interest and that blue with that orange is stunning do you like that i mean that's not this is not typical for me i don't usually do the blue but this year seeing that orange and that blue together is beautiful so i've done a couple of things different i'm learning i'm going with the flow y'all just just a little bit here and there now i'm not going crazy but just a little bit so you're going to continue to add in picks where you feel like you need them i'm going to add my little flyaway pieces here my little blue berries um, with the little blue seeds instead of using the yellow I decided to add the blue just to put a little more blue you can use whatever color you want and those also came from Dollar Tree these were not in with the seasonal stuff they were in with the regular flowers uh, in case you're looking for these they look really pretty in this don't they so you're just gonna add these here and there and you see me struggling to find the little piece of foam back there no problem I just keep going with it and you're gonna add them wherever you feel like you need a little little extra pizzazz and then of course you don't want to leave the bottom open so we're gonna add one there kind of makes my flower a little squished up doesn't it if I would have left the stem longer the flower would not be squished 
So you just leave your stem a little bit longer. I want the flower there for now though because it helps give me placement of where I am going to put my pieces around it because that's kind of the center stage of the arrangement part. Now we're going to make some little picks with our ribbons. So the orange ribbon and the blue and white ribbon came from Dollar Tree and the cream colored burlap came from burlapfabric.com. So I am just going to cut these into pieces um, that are nine inches long and I'm going to do sets of three because we're gonna make three picks with three pieces of ribbon each. I'm gonna dovetail my ends. You can do slants if you prefer that. I would not recommend that you leave this type of ribbon without a cut because they will fray. This is like a satin type ribbon. It does have wire. They all have wire and that is very important when you're making these picks because we need to be able to style them or position them and have them hold their placement. So this is all we have to do to put these picks together. And this is easy, isn't it? You're gonna take a piece of jute, grab it, flip it over. I'm just kind of gathering with my fingers a little bit and you can do it this way if you want, but you don't have to. You can just cinch it up and then arrange them. Then I'm going to tie this. Then I'll kind of arrange a little bit to make sure that I fix the places that flip over. Give it a few knots. You could use floral wire here if you would prefer also. Now what I'm using for the pick is just little pieces of the branches where I have cut flowers off of picks before. So you know you always have the stems left. I save those because they're really good for using in projects. Now I'm going to add hot glue in the middle put that little pick there and then tie it tightly down. This is gonna give it a lot of security. And then it glue needs to be dry completely before you uh, try to place it in your arrangement. So this is why the wire is important. You see how it has uh, all that dimension in it? Some are raised above others. You've got little curves in the ends. If you didn't have wired ribbon, these would just flop around. Cute. So we're gonna do that three times and we'll have three of these beautiful little picks. So just like when I'm making a bow, I fluff the heck out of any ribbon I get. Um, if you watch me for any length of time, you know that. It's important and I love to do it. Love it, love it a lot. So now I'm just gonna start placing these in where again, I'm just kind of feeling like I want them to be. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. And I'm not putting these in a particular um, pattern or angle. I just like it over here, so this is where I'm going to put it. And this is where my flower being sunk in needs to be removed. So I'm going to put the little witch hazel in that I pulled out when I pulled out my flower and I'm just going to go ahead and add these picks in. Here and there, uh, a lot of people like to work in a triangular pattern, but in this particular situation, I did not do that. I just, again, put them where I felt like I needed them or where they would look nice. I put one up here. Now I'm going to add a longer stem onto my flower, my beautiful sunflower, and then place it back down on the inside. Now it sits above the rest of it and it's not sunk in. Doesn't that look better? Yes, that looks better. So I think we could do a little something extra here. Y'all, those colors are beautiful. Love them together. All right, so now I'm just gonna remove the hanger off of this little leaf, and we're gonna use it to make a bow to go on the top, and the bow is going to cover up the little hole. Okay, so you can put that wherever you would like, but let me show you how to make the bow first. You're just gonna wrap it over on itself, because this has been cut, so now I have a little piece that I cut to go around the middle. I'm gonna trim it down, add a little bit of hot glue here, and I'm gonna grab another floral pick and use that as an extra finger to push that down in place. And look at our little bow, cute. Now with a little bit of hot glue, I can put it right over the hole in the top of that leaf. And I am thankful that it fit nicely. Now we're gonna make a pick out of this leaf. So we're just gonna grab another little branch here and hot glue it down on the back and then decide where we wanna put it. 
And at first I was thinking I would put it on the left side, but then I thought, no, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the right. So I just pressed it down into the foam on the right. And this is how it looks. Okay, so if you're not liking this blue, what colors would you have used in this project? You could always have used a yellow sunflower if you would like. You could use a different color um, scarf, you know, and then go off of that. Pick your florals based on that. That would certainly be good as well. And you can make it smaller. If you don't like such a, a big floral area on the top, you could also leave off the ribbon picks if that's not something that you like. Or you could use buffalo check if you're into that. I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 o'clock. The next craft is a pumpkin tower. Now this is not a topiary. I've done those in the past, but this one's a tower. I'm going to use a cone of foam. I got a thrifted piece that is gorgeous and it came from Kirkland's. Beautiful. It's a candlestick. And then a variety of pumpkins. This one's a flocked garland that I got at the Dollar Tree Plus and then they're the ones that are on picks. There are the ones that are sweater, there's leather pumpkins, there's tiny pumpkins, big pumpkins, green, white, whatever you like, and then some thrifted picks. I'm going to carefully take the rope off of here and glue my stem back down. So if you're going to take your rope off, just be careful. It will sometimes show underneath the, uh, the white, but you can go over that with a little bit of paint if you would like, or you could just leave it alone. Whatever you prefer. Maybe you could even use brown there if you wanted make that stem look a little bit better. Doesn't match perfectly, but I'm perfectly okay with that. So I'm going to break my picks in half because we don't, leave, we don't need an entire stick. We just need to use something to hold it down into this foam. I am not using glue here. It would take a whole package of glue and it would be a big old mess. Now you see the pumpkin hangs down longer. If you want to sit this down on the table and not raise it up, you would want your pumpkins to be sitting flush with the bottom and not extending below. But since mine is going to be on a candlestick, we want them to hang over the edge because I don't want to see the foam, right? We want to cover that completely up. You're going to add a variety of pumpkins. I do suggest that you put the bigger pumpkins toward the bottom and then as you work your way up, add the smaller ones. That way you keep the cone shape. And that's kind of the idea with this pumpkin tower is to keep your um, that shape. So I'm just going to add along here and there. There is no pattern. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have too many of the same color in the same spot. And since you're not gluing this, as you're putting them down, you can remove them just like right there. And this is like the perfect way if you have accidentally went overboard and you have a ton of pumpkins in your stash, which I had a ton of pumpkins because I had a lot donated to me. This is like the perfect way to use them and make a beautiful centerpiece or tabletop decor or to go on your mantle, whatever you like. This is like the perfect way to use them. And because we are not gluing them in place, we can also take these apart at some point and use them for projects for maybe next year or the end of this year. Perfect. It works out for everybody. So some of these pumpkins actually came off of those picks, um, those darker orange ones that you see. They actually came off of the picks. And I like all of those colors together. I thought I had a lot of pumpkins, but in the end I was scratching around trying to find what else I had. And then I remembered that I had bought some of those cream colored pick pumpkins that they had out this year. And they were great to go in those little small spaces. But you can see there are still little gaps and spaces in there. And this is where the greenery comes in. So I'm going to grab some of that pale greenery and start pushing those leaves into the foam underneath. Some have berries, some don't, some have acorns, just whatever you feel like you wanna use. What do y'all say? And I'm asking the people from the South because I have heard acorns and I have heard acorns. I accidentally said acorns one day and my kids almost laughed me completely out of my yard, but yeah. Um, what do y'all say? Which way do y'all pronounce it? People up north, you're probably not going to understand what I'm even talking about. And that is okay. We just have silly ways in the south sometimes. It just is more, more to love about us, I guess. 
Okay, so you can see I've added in all of the pale ones that I like. And I've tried to put um, some of the berries up top because the top is going to be, it's going to have a lot of berries on it. That's going to be like the topper of this little tower. These little pieces I just thrifted um, this past week, and I'm going to pull all of those off of the plastic. They're single pieces, and I'm going to add them to the middle of each of the little areas um, where I have the pale colored greenery. I think this is like the perfect way to add more orange into it because some of those pumpkins are orange, you know. I don't want this to be completely pale colored or cream colored. I want it to have some of that richness that I love so much about fall. That rustic vibrancy, I guess you could say. So I'm just going to add those in. In the middle of each of those little bundles of the pale stuff. And I do this continuously. I turn it around and around to make sure I've got my gaps covered. And then I had a little bag of these little berry pieces. I think there's like little picks that you can get at Dollar Tree that I got this year. And I'm going to add those in around the top. It's going to help keep the shape. We don't want anything too bulky up there. We want this to still look like it is, you know, a triangular form. And this is how it's looking. And I am loving it. There are still a couple of gaps, and I do address those, so don't worry about that. I want to kind of keep it balanced. I like it. Now we are going to give it a stand. So this is kind of indented here. I'm just going to use an ornament, a little wood slice ornament that happens to be the exact same thickness of the um, that we need so that the bottom of the cone will sit on top of it. I'm going to add some fix hall adhesive that comes from Dollar Tree and then I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and it's on my cool setting because you know if it's on hot it can melt it and I'm going to try to get my placement in the center here if it's not perfectly straight that's okay because you can go back in and add more leaves around the bottom and you'll never be able to see it once it's cooled off look at this little beauty oh I love it I love it I wish I had more green pumpkins in there but I didn't buy enough but I love it so you've already seen the first project, which is the broom, and here are the last two. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. We have so much fun on here, giveaways, and we celebrate things. It's, it's wonderful, always positive. I would also love if you would consider sharing this video. If you enjoyed it, I think other people that you know would probably enjoy it too. And it helps my channel and lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job and making quality content. And it's a huge way to give me a thank you. It really, really makes me feel better to know that you like and appreciate all the hard work that goes into having a channel and making these creations. Thank you so much to my subscribers who are already part of the family. I love talking to y'all in the comments. If I have not addressed something that you have asked me or said, believe me, I will be getting back to you. I believe in you and I know that you possess exactly the talent that you need to make some things to express yourself and some things that you can look at that will bring you joy in your home during the holiday season and really all year long. Thank you so very much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.